If you bought this light online, you would see that it advertises 120 watts. Yet, here in person, when we look at the lens, it advertises 82 watts. This light has a look like on Amazon, four different wattage ratings, two different waterproof ratings, depending on whether you're buying it off of its website, off of Amazon, or if you're buying the lookalike off of Amazon. Despite being the smallest, the most compact, and having the least amount of LEDs, this light is one of the most highly regarded and comes from one of the most highly regarded brands in the off-road industry. The lights on my truck, despite being forward-facing lights, advertise a 270 degree light pattern which is ridiculous. Hi, I'm Tyler, and today we're getting into some of the BS, and we're trying to uncover the truth about the off-road lighting industry. What manufacturers are advertising versus what their lights actually do. First, let's introduce the competitors. We have Baja Designs. This is their Squadron R Sport. This is a driving pattern, which means it has spot, and flood combination. This driving light from Oxido is supposed to be a bot and flood combo beam with DRL. This six and a half inch light from Colite bots on the top three rows and flood on the bottom for a driving combination light, as well as a DRL across the center and on the outside. And then lastly, the ox beam lights, which are currently wired to my truck, five inch pod light with DRLs and side shooters for extra light dispersion out to the side. The Colite and the ox beam both appear to be rebrands of generic lights. If you go on Amazon or eBay, you can find lookalikes from different Different company. The descriptions of the products are almost identical and the photos look like twins. Whereas the Oxido and the Baja designs are clearly proprietary designs that were developed by that company for that company. Being a rebrand isn't necessarily a deal breaker as that happens all the time in the automotive industry. They are manufactured for Matco by AJ Manufacturing because Matco doesn't make their own tools. However, we should expect that original lights have more R&D behind them so they should probably cost a little bit more and perform better. The easiest specification that we can immediately test is wattage. According to the law, P equals IV, where power is equal to voltage times amperage. If we measure the voltage of our battery and the amperage that the light draws while it's running on a circuit, we'll be able to tell how much power it's actually operating on. We won't run the DRLs for this test. We just want to know the specs about the lights that are actually shooting light. The aux beam falls short here. It only produces 55 watts per light, well short of the advertised 86 watts per light. The Colite kind of hits what it's advertising. At about 65 watts, it is higher than the 120 per pair advertised, but is much lower than the 180 per pair that's also advertised. The Oxido does not live up to what's on the website, but it does live up to what's on the lens coming in at 86 watts that is above the 82 watts advertised on the lens baja designs exceeds specifications pulling 31 watts while only advertising 26. if you're finding this video useful please give it a like or a thumbs up to let me know that you got value out of it and enjoyed it Thank you so much. Think also here about the efficiency of the LEDs. The Oxbeam uses 16 LEDs to pull 55 watts, while the Baja Designs only uses four LEDs to pull 31. The LEDs in the Baja Designs are twice as efficient as the ones in the Oxbeam. The Baja Designs LEDs are pulling 7.75 watts per LED, whereas the Oxbeam is only pulling about 3.4. Since the Colite and the Oxido light use about the same quality of LEDs, we are overpaying on the Oxido in terms of the quality of LEDs that we're getting. The Oxido is three dollars and fifty cents more expensive per led despite using about the same quality of led but these power statistics don't really tell us anything unless these lights are actually performing unless these lights are actually using good reflector housings and they're really focusing and projecting that light where it needs to go when it comes to lights everybody advertises lumens 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 and then a little bit about lux However, when it comes to doing measurements, it's really hard to measure lumens, much easier to measure lux. One lumen per square meter is one lux. Lux is a measure of intensity, how much light is falling on a given surface. Very easy to measure. I bought a lux meter off of Amazon. If we wanted to measure lumens, however, we need to look at a surface that all the light falls on. We need to know the lux at multiple points on that surface, and we need to determine the total surface area that that light is falling across. Much more difficult to do. I could make an honest attempt at it, there would be a mistake. I'd have to aggregate data and not nearly as precise as a lux meter. So at six feet, here are our lux numbers. There's a max function on my lux meter. So when I test, it'll just hold the maximum value that it finds throughout the test. The ox beam pulled 32,500 lux. The Colite did an impressive 65,700 lux. The Oxido, 52,300 lux. Baja design, surprisingly low at 11,900 lux but you can see that it has an intensity in the beam that spreads to the sides that the other lights don't really feature. The other lights have a hot spot that's mostly round, whereas the Baja Designs one does leak to the sides a little bit. A much more precise 
light pattern that the other lights don't feature. If you are interested in purchasing any of these products, there are links in the description as well as discount codes to some of the products shown in this video. So these are all driving style lights. They're all supposed to be combos of spot and flood that are supposed to provide a lot of usable light. The spot throws a little light down range and the flood fills in a little bit of the gaps closer to the vehicle. These seem like the most useful and practical lights to test. Now I know some of you are like, well, one of them's a tiny light pod, the other's a big driving light. What I'm concerned about here is performance per dollar. We could do a light pod test. In my case, I have a front bumper that could use a pair of lights. I'm not picky, but I do want to get a good deal and I'm willing to fit anything between a couple of light pods or four light pods, but if two big driving lights do it, I have the room, they look good, like I'll just go with that. So let's do a test out in the field. It's finally dark outside, so we need to hook up all of these lights to the truck and to the switch panel so we can take them out into the field and compare the light pads. Now there's an empty lot. I can measure the distances on Google Earth to give us an approximate of how far we're testing lights at. Okay, here's kind of the driver's eye view for each light. I've been adjusting the lights for the last 10 minutes. Got these lights all pointing straight, all pointing level, starting with the aux beam. We're gonna go measure the lux at the end of the parking lot. We don't wanna go under one of these street lights in case there's a ton of light and that accidentally hits our lux meter. So we're gonna stand kind of in this dark spot where there's no lights near me except what's coming from the truck. The max I ever got was 10.6 lux on the ox beam. Now it's time to do the Baja Designs light. Okay, max I ever got with the Baja Designs is 2.9 lux. Again, we're standing in the same dark shadowy spot here. And there's our truck all the way down there. All right, time to do the Oxido. This one looks promising. This one's gonna be the brightest so far for sure. Okay, 11.8 lux on the Oxido. This one feels bright for sure. That's one of the brightest ones it feels like to me. And lastly, we have the Colite. Let's give her a go. It is a massive shadow compared to what I've been casting on previous lights. Be interesting to see if this one is actually the best light in terms of lux at distance. Wow. Really impressive. So the Colite put out 17.6 lux here at our distance. That is impressive. From here, I wanna go out to a 45 in between those two snow banks where it's pretty dark so that we can compare some of the spotlights to some of the lights that prioritize a spread. Zero lux, zero lux. That 45 degree angle one was a fail. None of these are shooting light really at 45. So let's do a quick little 25 degree angle. So we're gonna stand on a parking line slightly off to the left and see how these lights do at a closer distance. 3.6 lumens for the ox beam. The interesting thing to note with the ox beam, see that line there? No other light has those side shooters, so that is a nice feature. We've got 6.0 for the Baja design. You know, you see it's interesting, it has this flood pattern coming off of it, but that flood pattern doesn't last very long and then it breaks into the longer range pattern. So kind of an interesting light spread there, um, but definitely two distinct patterns combined in one light, which is what a driving combo is. And our first zero of the day, the Oxido. And we're just barely in the light spread of the Colite, which means we're at 6.7. We move one parking line over and we're at zero lumens. Now we walk to our testing parking line. And we catch that 5.7 to six lux. And from the cockpit, let's cycle through the lights one more time. All right, ox beam pretty tight, kind of hyper spot, Baja Designs. The most pleasant color, this color does look a little darker uh, just because the light color isn't as bright of a white. Very easy on the eyes, pretty good spread, but nothing intense. Oxido, very focused light pattern, uh, not much spread, very intense, very far down range. And then the Colite, pretty balanced with a very clear spot in the center, but some nice spread off to the sides that die off as you go down range. This light has probably the most fill all around. It throws plenty in front while still throwing a lot downrange. So very, very surprising test results. The entire time I was secretly hoping that the Baja Designs would win. I was rooting for it. Baja Designs is a great company. They make really good products. Their tools for understanding how lighting works and what kind of lights you need are awesome. And I was hoping secretly that it would win, but it didn't. Some of these more powerful, larger lights are just brute forcing their way into projecting more light. If at this point you're becoming a little suspicious of my test results, 
here's some math that backs up what we're finding. Lux, since it's inversely proportional to surface area, follows an inverse square law for point light sources such as LEDs. What this means is that if we get two times as far from the light, we can expect the lux to reduce by 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2 squared. For this test, we baseline the lights at 6 feet, then went out to about 425 feet, according to Google Earth. We went 70 times further from the light, so we should expect the lux to diminish by 1 over 70 squared. And I observed approximately that result. My worst percentage error was 63%, and I almost got down to 10%. For having such coarse distance measurements, I think this validates my results. After all this testing, why would you still buy a Baja Designs light? Baja Designs simply had the best light color possible. Very pleasant, yellowish, warm white. I could drive with that on all night. It has the best waterproof rating and it's a made in America product. Baja Designs is probably gonna be your best in terms of customer support, figuring out problems, advising you on products, and the products that they put out there work exactly as advertised. If you wanna know what you're getting as soon as you click purchase, buy Baja Designs, they're not lying to you. Some of these other companies, their marketing, English as a second language, I'm not trying to knock on them, but you are gonna run into some difficulties in really understanding what you're buying and why it may or may not be a good product. A few critiques of the lights. The Oxido really just had a poor flood pattern. This would be fine as just a hyper spotlight. The flood pattern that's supposed to come out of here wasn't that good. It looked scattered, it looked janky and jagged. It kind of made the light feel cheaper when I saw that really scattered light close to the pickup. I felt like the light wasn't working correctly. Way too white, way too intense of a light color straining on the eyes. I don't think I would want to drive with that light on for long periods of time. Very bright, but not easy on the eyes. A very harsh white light. The Baja Designs had really great light spread, but did not have anything that was super intense. This might be the truest driving light in the sense that it throws out light in all directions pretty equally and pretty far. It just can't keep up with some of the driving lights that use more LEDs. This had one of my favorite patterns and favorite light throw of all the lights. Not only is it the brightest, but it's a pretty good light pattern, just throwing a generic circle way down range. Sure, the light would be better if they could fill some of that light down and out and make a cutoff line, but I'm not gonna complain. This is the cheapest light and it seems to work really well. It had some of the best mounting hardware. It comes with a decent wiring harness. It has a really cool DRL function where it lights up across the rim and across the middle. It's only 200 bucks if you want a harness and the light. And that leaves the ox beam somewhere in the middle of just not performing very good and almost being as bad as the Baja designs for being about the same price and much bigger and many more LEDs. The ox beam clearly underperformed didn't hit any of its wattage claims, and the LEDs were the lowest quality that we tested. The side shooters are honestly super useful. Throw light out 180 degrees in your field of view, not 270, but 180, absolutely. Having light directly to the side of your drive, out your driver's window is pretty cool and would be pretty useful just for throwing more light in general. I liked that function a lot. I just wish the actual hyper spot and the spot part of the light was stronger. Now, let's talk about any biases that might have occurred in this review. The biggest opportunity for bias, and the one you're probably asking yourself is, who's paying for these lights? And what am I required to say as part of all this testing? Well, that's quite easy, and I have no problem sharing that information with you guys. Baja Designs, I paid for myself. Colite, I have worked with before, sent me them for free, and I just had to make a video about how the lights work. Oxido works the same way. They send you a light, they say, please make a video about it. The light is free, they don't pay me beyond that. Uh, no strings attached, like I didn't have to sign a contract, I didn't have to give a deadline. They do want to make sure that you make the video in a timely manner as soon as you get the product. But again, Oxido is not telling me, you have to say this light is great, you have to say you like this light, blah, blah, blah. I simply get the light and I get to make a video about it. Oxbeam works the same way, except I already fulfilled my requirements with Oxbeam. I got those lights as part of the switch panel install, which was my previous video. That also brings us to affiliate marketing. Some of these lights, I do have affiliate links in the description where I get a small commission for selling on behalf of the company. The lights don't cost more. It is simply the company's way of rewarding me. If the lights happen to sell, I get money. So that would be the biggest opportunity for bias is me saying things that I don't actually believe about these lights in order to sell them to you. I do like getting affiliate links because if you guys are gonna buy these, I might as well get credit for the sale. So I appreciate that. You guys do that a lot on Amazon and I make a small commission there. It helps make these videos possible. If I was not doing things like affiliate marketing, buying Baja Designs lights simply to test in a YouTube video would not be feasible. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys. Now, that being said, 
I have four pairs of lights. I don't need all of them. Let's give a set of lights away. I'm for sure gonna keep the co-lights here. You'll receive the lights for free, but you must pay shipping. I'm not gonna just cover shipping. I don't know where you guys live, so I'm not gonna be out of pocket on that. Free lights plus shipping. If you wanna be entered in this giveaway, you must comment on this video, LIGHTS, in all capitals, capital L-I-G-H-T-S. Comment that anywhere in your comment, you'll be entered. When the giveaway does happen, at the established time that I'll put here, I will reply to your comment and you must email or direct message me within 24 hours. Doing giveaways on YouTube is always a little more difficult, but that's how we're gonna do it. That's the best I can do. There'll also be a giveaway on Instagram if you want to just wait for that one to roll around. It will not be at the same time since I have content coming out at different times. I will post proof of the giveaway on my community tab. So once I do get a responding person who has agreed to pay for shipping, blah, 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 I will show proof of that on the community tab just so you guys can see the lights are going out and things are happening. If you run any of these lights, I'd love to know what your experience is or what your experience is with other competitors' lights, whether they perform similarly or whether they perform better. Otherwise, if you're interested in wiring lights and doing it well, I do recommend that Oxbeam switch panel install that I did. That was the hero of the video today. It made testing all these lights so much easier. I literally had those Baja Designs lights hooked up in less than 10 minutes. It was great. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.